reflected at uh, a quarter to seven. Phil Collins is on a huge world tour at the moment. We're going behind the scenes with Phil. Next. <laughs> Here we have a perfectly ordinary orange carpet. And here, a three-in-one carpet cleaner with more suction power than... Oops, I didn't see it. <laughs> hey, hey! Hey, buddy. Take me to the best burger place in town. Somewhere that does a real meaty, tasty, char-grilled burger. I wish you wouldn't keep doing this. Your prize burger, Mr. Weinberger. Hmm. <sighs> That was every bit as good as the burgers back home. This place sure does take some beating. And it also takes all major credit cards. Prize Burger from the Bird's Eye Steakhouse. The best grill in town. If you clean your kitchen with a product that's too harsh, this is what might happen. Jif is different. Jif lifts even tough stains and leave surfaces feeling like new. Jif. With the power to clean right through to the shine. Jif. Have you seen the brand new chat? The weekly mag that's so so packed. It makes you laugh, it makes you cry. A weekly puzzle book to try. Yakety yak, that's your chat. There's a free puzzle board and pen. You'll use it time and time again. Chat crams are full of this and that. You won't believe a mag so packed. Yakety yak, that's your chat. Chat on sale now, just 33p. My rich chocolate slices, said Mr. Kipling, are a test of character. Thoughtful people cut along the stripes. Carefree ones just cut them so. And if they start with the chocolate chips, I asked. My dear fellow, said Mr. Kipling. Your secret is safe with me. It's been a bit difficult trying to get through to Kevin, my fruit bat, since he got his personal stereo. Batman's on telly. You've won the pools. Who needs words? Round trees, fruit gums. They're very, very fruity. Celia came last in the fancy dress. That calls for angel delight. If anyone ever tells you there's anything bigger than Andrex, it's just a shaggy dog story. Well, hey, Duplo bricks! What are you making now? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's a rabbit! Woo! Duplo bricks! There's buckets of fun in this bucket! And welcome back. Now, I'm sure all Phil Collins fans are aware that the man is currently in the middle of a sell-out world tour. If you didn't manage to get a ticket, well, here's a little something in the way of compensation. Our reporter, Peter Morris, last week joined Phil and his band on the first few days of the European leg of his tour and persuaded Phil to reveal the secrets of his multilingual skills. Brussels was the first European stop on Phil's first solo world tour for five years, a tour that takes in 15 countries and will last almost nine months. Serious stuff indeed. In fact, everything on this tour is serious, as it's suitably named after Phil's latest album, But Seriously. And it seems that includes some serious guests, like the Belgian Prime Minister Wilfred Martens, a Collins fan who popped in complete with interpreter just to pass on his compliments and managed to stay for the show. After he and 12,000 other Belgians had been seriously entertained, it's a quick hop to the airport and off in a private jet to Paris and a four-night sellout stint at the 16,000-seater Bercy Stadium. So how do you decide what to play to keep that many people happy? We've got four albums and the Basta songs, so... Um, well, that's why the show is almost three hours, you know, I mean, because uh, there's lots of songs I don't want, I, I don't want to not play, put it that way. I want to play would have been the easiest way of saying <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> but, 
yeah, there's the hits, you know, there's the hits that I have to play. And I want to play. I mean, you know, I like playing the hits. But um, there are a few songs which I would like to play, which most people um, kind of could take or leave. Yeah, there's the instrumentals, you know, which we... I mean, there's a thing called West Side, which is from Hello, I Must Be Going, which I like playing. It gives me a break to start with from my voice. I get a chance to play the drums. I get a chance to do a little drum solo. Um, it also features the band as an ensemble, you know, playing as a, a real big band would. And, um, but from an audience point of view, although in Paris, they, they love it, you know. In other parts, you kind of see the, 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 the older people sort of looking at their watches, so I wonder how much, how much this noisy, how long this noisy song is going to go on for. Well, as Phil says, that doesn't seem to be a problem here. An important part of this show is communication with the audience, both for fun and to talk a little about some of the songs with messages. But with 15 countries to visit, that in itself creates another set of demands, and not a little amusement at some of the sound checks. In France, I, I speak phonetic French. I mean, I write it down phonetically and I, and I speak it. Um, and then you, I mean, because I can't improvise in French, uh, you then have fun with what you're saying. The other night I said, um, in, a, in a time long, long ago, you know, I said that in French. And of course everyone went, ooh, you know, very poetic. And so I said it again, you know, and they all applauded. And then you say it again and they applaud. So you have fun with it in that respect. You, you get something going with the audience. But um, in Japan, you know, I spoke Japanese, which is actually a lot easier to speak than French, believe it or not. And they sort of, on the edge of their seats, they love it, the fact that you're speaking Japanese. And then you get it wrong, and then you turn the paper upside down a couple of times. <laughs> and, and then you screw it up if you can't, if you don't make them laugh. I mean, it's great fun to do all that. And as fans in English-speaking countries will find out, perhaps a little easier, some of the banter is indeed very entertaining. But of course, for most people, the primary reason for coming is to hear him sing and play. And on this sort of form, it's easy to see why. Je suis ici avec vous. Honest. Ce soir est le premier concert à Bercy, en Paris. Et je vais jouer longtemps pour vous ce soir. La prochaine chanson qui s'appelle Against All Odds. I wish I could just make a turn around Turn around and see me cry There's so much I need to say to you So many reasons why You're the only There's just an empty space And there's nothing left here to remind me Just the memory of your face Take a look at me now around Cause there's just an empty space But to wait for you Well that's all I can do And that's why The master, Phil Collins, is where I should be tonight. You're going there tonight? Hope so, relying on Jill. Good morning, Jill. 
Um, Ulrika's back with the weather at half past eight. Ulrika, good morning. I like him very much. So do I. Brilliant. He's fantastic. He's Brilliant. the best, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Celia came last in the fancy dress. That calls for angel delight. Magic Barbie. Sweet, juicy, and completely free of artificial flavorings. And we've put a lot of effort into the packaging. Dole, the better snack. Hello there and welcome back. And it's time now for part two of our exclusive look behind the scenes on tour with Phil Collins. His current tour will last for nearly nine months and in today's report, Phil talks about how touring's changed now. Everyone takes their family on the road with them apparently. Peter Morris reports. On a tour that lasts almost nine months and with a travelling entourage of around 40 people, not including wives, girlfriends and children, it's obviously important that people get on together. And thankfully that seems to have been achieved. Many of this band accompanied Phil on his last tour. Daryl Sturmer, for example, has worked with Phil and Genesis for 12 years and says some of the volatile problems facing younger bands just don't exist here. I call the group 30-something, because that's basically what this group is. And it just seems that we're much more laid back than we used to be. Uh, we find fun in different things than we used to find. People have asked us, I mean, do, do you ever get into this thing where some of the guys in the band trash the, the hotel rooms? And I say, no, our children do. <laughs> and that's true. Because when I, when I have my kids out, all of a sudden, my hotel room looks horrible. I mean, it's just things all over the place. When I'm there, it's neat clean you know I, I kind of like that thankfully for Phil his daughter Lily's a bit young for that sort of thing just yet but he's obviously glad she and his wife Jill are with him on the road even if it does clash with the traditional rock and roll image but having the families around I mean, we got very embarrassed on the last Genesis tour of Australia for instance we had all the string section because in the in Australia the musicians union rule is such that you have to employ the same amount of musicians as an opening act or as part of your group so what we do, we have real string players, and it sounds great, you know, we, we actually enjoy it. Um, and they enjoy it because they get work, because there, aren't that much, there isn't that much work for string players nowadays with synthesizers doing it all. So, um, but backstage, all these ladies were knitting, you know, and we had nannies and kids and stuff, and I thought, if, if the enemy saw this, <laughs> you know, oh, we're, we're already finished as far as the enemy is concerned, <laughs> but we really would be with the final nail in the coffin. But thankfully, it seems relationship controversies are largely restricted to being played out on the stage rather than off it. Tell me who said I would? Who said I would? Who said I would? Who said I would? Tell me who said I would? Who said I would? Tell me who said I would? Tell me who said I would, who said I would. As well as performing on a tour like this with all that entails and his Genesis commitments, Phil is of course in demand as a producer and drummer for other bands with his reputation for perfection. We're just saying they're not happy with my bass drum and we've got to do one thing at a time because if I'm going to change something... Bobby! <laughs> Yes, headset mic, please. Now, oh, hang on a minute. They aren't happy with the drums, right? So let's do one thing at a time. But he says his reputation as a workaholic is an exaggeration. I work for a living. You know, that's what I do. I mean, I think most people think of rock stars as sort of lazing about, doing the odd gig, making the odd record. That's what... But, so, but I, actually, I actually work for a living. You know, I, I work as hard as anybody else does. And why shouldn't I, you know? Um... I do have more time off than it would appear. You know, I mean, if I do, uh, 
if I do something like a Tears for Fears track, it's a single, people say, and on the drums is Phil Collins, you know, and everyone says, oh, he's done it again, you know. But in fact, all that took was an afternoon, you know. Uh, the song I did with, with Eric on his new album, Bad Love, you know, that took an afternoon. Um, my albums take a, take a while, so the Genesis albums. There seems to me an awful lot of downtime, mm. compared, considering anyway, that I am working for a living. You know, I mean, I get weekends off, the same as everybody else, and I get, every now and again, I get a month off, or, or I take, every, every July, August, I take about a month, month and a half off to be with my kids. So that is a full stop that I have in the year. So why shouldn't I work the other 11 months, you know? I don't know, I mean, I, I do it because I enjoy it, and uh, I'm fortunate to have a job that I like. And even more fortunately, millions of others like it too. Class. More from Phil Collins tomorrow. Mentioned Jill yesterday. Thank you, Jill, for a very nice night. You were out there. Last night. I was there with Jill and Nick, my hosts, and it was terrific. If you get tickets to see Phil Collins, you're very, very. Although he's now got a worldwide reputation as a writer, singer, and producer, Phil's first love is still playing the drums. Something he's been doing after a fashion since he was five years old. But recently, he's discovered his recollection of how he got his first real kit was a little different from the reality. It is true. I, actually, for years, I've been saying I, sold my, I made the ultimate sacrifice and sold my trains. And, and about a year ago, Clive came up to me and he said, I just like to... It was my train set you sold. Do you realise that, you know? And I never realised. <laughs> it was always in my... Well, we shared a room, you know, bunk beds. It was always in our room, and I just figured it was mine. But then the youngest one always does, you know? However, apparently Big Brother holds no hard feelings. It is difficult to imagine, though, that although Mr. Collins can now fill arenas like this easily, at one time he couldn't even get a job. I was the professional audition. I went for many auditions that never got. Manfred Mann's Chapter 3, I went for, didn't get. Vinegar Joe, which at that point I think was... No, no, it was Vinegar Joe. Then it became Dada, and Robert Palmer was singer in that band, of course. Um, didn't get that. I don't know why, because I was pretty good, you know, I, I guess I didn't fit for some reason or just, I don't know, maybe I didn't play well, but, you know, I mean, I, I was very dead, I was deadly serious at the time and I, I thought I was good enough to get in, the, get in the band, but obviously someone was better ahead of me. Happily, those early difficulties didn't deter the young Mr. Collins and his perseverance has paid off in a big way. If you could find a way Don't ask me how I know Because if you don't wanna hear It's been a long, hard road And the end is getting here You never thought you'd ever get a chance You never thought your break would come along If you tell me you won't, I'll find the key Just to reach out and touch It's all yours Just a hang in line up And you do it 
Phil's persistence and eventual success means that as well as money and fame, he's also gained something else he wanted from an early age. The success to me was uh, being respected by other musicians. That was... They used to be in the Melody Maker, when the Melody Maker was in music paper. Um, there used to be a column called the Raver Column. And uh, Chris Welch, who was then sort of a very heavy muso journalist with, with Melody Maker, he used to sort of caught Carl Palmer at so-and-so. Drummers should check him out, you know. That's, that was, to me, having arrived, you know. If ever they wrote that about me, I'd have been happy. They never did. But, I mean, um, that was, to me, that was success. And you don't have to look too far to see the standard of musicians who now want to work with him. Lee Sklar is James Taylor's bass player, as well as being in demand for a host of top American artists, from Jackson Brown to Dolly Parton. The Phoenix Horns have played on all Phil's albums and tours since he first approached them when they were with Earth, Wind and Fire. And their attitude to him sums up that of the whole band. I feel um, real good to work with. He's, he's um, quite demanding, which is proper, I think. And um, it always ends up being a lot of fun. It turns out very good. Yeah, We work hard, but it's, it's fun. Leaving in just one mind, beating together till the end of time. You know we're two hearts. Leaving in just one mind, together forever till the end of time. No, no. Brilliant stuff, marvellous stuff, and lots more from Phil Collins tomorrow, round about the same time. Sir, Schwartz Authentic Mix is up and I With Schwartz Authentic Mixes, you can create all kinds of dishes, from exotic things like shepherd's pie to everyday things like tandoori chicken. Schwartz Authentic Mix, home cooking from around the world. Kamal kar diya, aur meetha kya hai? Dekho to sahi, spotted dick. Spotted dick? Celia came last in the fancy dress. That calls for angel delight. At our exclusive tea dance competition, Jody and Jason are stepping out in their new Podus Ultra Tea nappies. Wider at the back than at the front to fit just like pants. Unlike some models, new pant shaped Podus Ultra Tea. Because the better a nappy fits, the less it leaks. Go on, please. Kevin, my fruit bat doesn't want to have his picture taken. Maybe these Rantree's fruit gums will help to change his mind. Rantree's fruit gums. They're very, very fruity. Both of these splendid machines wash carpets. This one, however, leaves carpets drier. And it isn't orange.
again, 8.22, it's nice to have you with us. Time now for part four in our series of exclusive interviews with Phil Collins. As a musician, he's internationally known, but a couple of years ago he showed his ability as an actor as well, uh, starring in the hit movie Buster. It's a direction he'd like to pursue until the right script comes along, though he keeps his hand in by producing some of the most entertaining videos around. Peter Morris reports. Two Hearts was one of two hits Phil had from his film Buster, yet another vehicle for the seemingly endless talent of the man. He also co-wrote the song with one of the legendary Motown songwriters of the 60s, Lamont Dozier, a man he now calls a friend. But despite his own worldwide success, it seems meeting someone like Lamont at first was just as big a thrill for Phil as one of his fans meeting him. The first thing I did was ask for his autograph. I mean, he came, he came to see my, my show um, in 85 in Los Angeles on the No Jacket tour. And he came down because I guess Philip Bailey knew him and the horn players knew him and everybody, you know, we're all close knit. And he came by and um, he, I mean, I'd done You Can't Hurry Love by this point. And I was invited by the Hollands, who, uh, the two Holland brothers and, and Lamont don't actually see each other too much because there was a bit of, well, they're okay now, but there was some bad blood. But um, I got invited down to the studio and I was too nervous to go to meet the guys. You know, I said, I don't want to go, I can't. I don't know them, how can I? So, um, but when Lamont showed up, it was great. And I got his autograph and it's sitting in, framed in my studio at home. While on tour, Phil does get to meet a lot of people. We saw earlier this week the Belgian Prime Minister is among his fans. But on top of all that, and performing while he's on the road, he also monitors other aspects of his career, like the latest videos and the need for different material for different markets. What is right for one country is not necessarily right for another country. So you just work it out. But nothing is put out unless I think it's a good idea, you know, or we all agree on it. I mean, I think well, I've had that great relationship with Virgin from the word go, that I'm in control, really, of the way that I am represented, you know. I mean, that, we that went um, as far back as the kind of writing that was, I mean, it was all my handwriting, and it still is, the kind of well, what that says, you know, um, what pictures are used, what, how, you know, what the advertising is going to look like. You know, the, I'm not just plonked in a place and someone says, do this because it'll be all right, don't worry about it. You know, we talk about it and it has to be something that I feel good about. Mm. So why, why do you remember for the US with something happening on the way to heaven for the UK just now? Um, well, I, I don't know. The, the <laughs> having said all that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, the America, it was obvious that, that do you remember is, it's an American hit, I think. I mean, I, you don't often know really what, what songs are going to be hits or not. I mean, I would never have thought another band Paradise was going to be a hit. I would never have thought I Wish It Would Rain was going to be here. I mean, that was an album cut, and it got to number three in America. So I just don't know. But, I mean, I, I do know so something. You know, I, I, do you remember, I think, is, is an obvious American single. And they feel after Wish It Would Rain that it would be a good one to go with. You know. Songs like this one are well received, particularly in the States, but Phil's anxious not to be bracketed solely as a balladeer, and although he enjoys making these mini features on video, epic productions aren't always necessary. Um, something like Something Happened on the Way to Heaven is more of a straightforward video, although we put a little twist in it as we see it through the eyes of a dog, you know. I was going to say, who came up with that idea? Who? Well, it was uh, Jim and Paul. They, they had, because it's been a long time since the last album, and, s and certain ideas are more suitable to me than Genesis. They got a little scrapbook of ideas together, and when I met them for the Another Day in Paradise video, which was 
a strong sort of, you know, mm. punch in the face sort of video, which is what it's supposed to be. They said, how about these ideas we've got, you know, and I, and I just, I thought, a few of them really, I really like. And, um, and we paired them up with songs, you know, that, that they could work. But, um, and so some of them, I'm sure, will see the light of day. I thought you were never supposed to work with children and animals, was the old yeah. adage. So, That's was, right, you know. But what about well, I've already saw, I think in one of the Daily Papers they had a picture of Pippin, the dog, with a picture of me, which is not <laughs> just the kind of publicity I need. You know, Phil... I hear he's got his own pet press lover, agent. You know. <laughs> I like pets, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, you know, I'm back to being Des O'Connor again, if I'm not careful. Very good. Lots more from Phil Collins tomorrow. It's our final episode tomorrow, around about 8.20. Right now, though, let's see what the weather's doing with Ulrika. Good morning to you. Good morning, Lorraine, and good morning to you. And without further ado, very happy birthday to John Turnbull, who's 26 today. And contrary to your opinion, it is going to rain on your birthday. Very wintry and blustery showers up there in Scotland this morning, and some of them tending to be quite heavy. 8.20 all next week. Hello, welcome back. And it's time for the fifth and final part of our series of exclusive interviews with Phil Collins. And this morning, Phil reveals to our reporter Peter Morris the secret of his revolutionary dress sense. Phil Collins is one of those artists who doesn't fall easily into a category since his talents and his interests are so diverse. But with the help of Carol, the tour's wardrobe mistress, he is making an effort to smarten up his stage image, even if it does go a little against the grain. This is the first time I'm wearing a brand new suit that was really meant for home. And she put it out for me to wear because she wants me to wear it at the Albert Hall. And wants me to find out what it looks like. But I never, you know, it's taken me ages to um, get into wearing nice clothes on stage. You know? Usually I just don't like sweating in them, you know. And why should I pay all that money for a nice, this nice gear? And then, uh, then I realise that more people see me on stage than anywhere else. So. I suppose it makes sense to, to look reasonably smart on stage. Does it that look like a nice piece of cloth? This is definitely, yeah. If you ask me how much it costs, <laughs> I'll tell you. It cost me this arm and this leg. <laughs> Thankfully, though, with a string of hits like this behind him, the costs of the suits isn't really too much of a problem. Well, I need love, love, love. Ooh, he's in my mind. I need to find, find someone to call mine. My mama said you can. I like covering other people's songs. I'm not one of those writers that, you know, it has to be my songs or nothing. Um, 
two of my favourite songs in the set at the moment, are always, which was Irving Berlin, you know, and Separate Lives with Stephen Bishop. Um, maybe it's because they're not my songs, I enjoy them so much, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, on the first album I did Tomorrow Never Knows, because I, I always liked singing Beatles songs at the piano, and I just thought that song was a bit underrated at the time, overlooked. And uh, then when the next album came out, I thought, yeah, I'd like to do another cover version. You know, then I thought, well, Motown, maybe I could do a Motown song. Had a short list, and You Can't Hold Love was the one that I thought people would remember when they heard it. But it wasn't played to death, like Reach Out, I'll Be There is always played. Keep Me Hanging On is always played, and Where Did I Love Go and Baby Love. But there were certain songs which people remember as soon as they hear them, but they don't often hear them. So. Any others you fancy doing? I mean, uh, do, you, do you think about that? Do you think about Well, I would. I mean, I'd love to do an album of cover versions, you know. I mean, like Bowie did it a while, you know, a long time ago, and so did Brian Ferry. It's something that I think appeals to people like us, that there are songs, and you think, well, I could do it differently. I could do that version of that and, and make it interesting. Um, whether it's just, you know, a bit of ego stroking, I don't know. I mean, I, I just like doing it. However, not every cover version that Phil mucks about with ends up in the show or on record. But they're still worth a look. Perhaps the overall way to sum up life on the road with Phil Collins should come not from him, but with someone he works with. We're going to be crying when the last show hits in October. I mean, I know everybody's going to be really sad because it becomes a way of life. And, uh, and I love it. But until then, Phil and crew will carry on entertaining thousands more fans like this. Phil Collins, our thanks to Peter Morris again for that series this week, and good luck to Phil, of course, on the rest of the world tour. Ulrika's back with the weather details. Ulrika, good morning to you. Good morning, Richard, and if any of you have missed any parts, it will all be on Good Morning Moments tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, so join me then. For the time being, some very pleasant weather for today. Not so nice tomorrow, but nice again. The when the